For my Mac using friends out there, in regards to using Atom, I just wanted to go through a couple of quick things that might be slightly different from what we talked about when we did the install from the PC. I am now on my Mac and I've gone to Atom.io. Atom automatically recognizes that I'm using the Mac, so I'll click the download button and this will download the software. Once the software has been downloaded, you'll probably be able to locate it in the download folder. I've just moved it to my desktop to make things easier. I'm going to double click on the zip file and unzip the file. Once you've unzipped the file, you'll have a folder that's called Atom-Mac. And if you open that folder, you will find the application of Atom. So all you need to do is take the Atom application and move it to your application folder. So you're just going to move it into your application folder like this. And once you have done that, you can simply double click on the Atom file and it will launch Atom. Now I've already gone through the setup and installed the necessary packages and themes into Atom. Remember that on a Mac, you're going to go to Atom and you go to preferences. This is what's going to open up your settings dialog box. So everything else that we did in the settings dialog box is exactly the same. You can go ahead and you can make those modifications and follow along with the previous video that I supplied to you. I did want to point one thing out that is a little bit different when we work on a Mac in Atom, and I want to show you how to resolve this. In order to show you this, I am going to open a project into Atom. Don't worry too much about how to do this right now. I will show you how to do this shortly. So I've gone ahead and opened up a project and you can see that I have some files here. This is my index.html file. I have a pages folder, an images folder, and a CSS folder. The icons that we see right now are because of the package that we added called file icons. So this isn't completely necessary, but I just like it because it makes all of the various files easily recognizable and I just find that to be helpful. One thing on a Mac that you will find is that you will get these files, they're called invisible files, they're going to be called .ds underscore store. These files exist all over your Macintosh computer, but you normally don't see them unless you are in an application that will display those types of files. And very commonly, code editors do display the invisible files. So this can be a little disconcerting and it can also get a little confusing when you have a bunch of these files. If you click on them, they just have basically what looks like gibberish and you don't ever need to edit these or worry about these files. There's nothing you need to do in these files. So what I like to do is I like to just make sure that those do not display. So let me show you how you can make that change. We are going to go into our packages and we are going to search for something called tree view, which comes pre-installed. It's one of the core packages. You will click on settings and in the settings for the tree view, we're going to want to come down into the settings area and we are going to want to click hide ignored names. Now, if you keep your eye on this DS store file, as soon as I click, hide ignored names, that file disappears. So I like to have that checked at all times because it no longer is going to display those DS store files, which don't really do anything. You can just ignore them, but they can get a little confusing. So I did just want to show you that. And then just to reiterate, when you are working on a Macintosh, instead of going to file settings, you're going to go to Atom preferences and that will open the settings dialog box. Other than that, everything is pretty much the same other than the keyboard shortcuts. The Mac uses command instead of control. The Mac uses option instead of alt, but everything else is pretty much the same. And I will remind you of those things as we go through the course.